This video, the third in the Chroma Pro International Training Series, has been developed to assist you in the design and production of more advanced graphic and special effects slides. A working knowledge of basic slide production on the part of the viewer is necessary. Although designs are included that have traditionally required the use of an expensive pin-registered camera, they are all possible on the Chroma Pro 45, equipped with the independent shutter and compound table with pin-registered carrier. Virtually any 35mm single lens reflex camera can be used with the Chroma Pro. However, the accuracy of the film advance mechanism will vary from body to body and may adversely affect the registration of the negatives. The following will provide you with the procedures and techniques necessary for transforming designs from basic to enhanced, from flat to three-dimensional, from static to moving. The first example is called a neon or glow and is one of the easiest enhancements to produce. Begin with a standard type paste-up and convert it to a line negative. Obtain a sheet of frosted acetate from an art supply store and trim it to a convenient size. Adjust the Chroma Pro to one to one and place the negative on the slide carrier. Select the color for the type from the color palette and set the filters and lens accordingly. The type will be double exposed with the glow so color on color rules apply. Expose the type onto Kodak 5018 film. Next, select the color to be used for the glow and adjust the dichroic filters. Place the acetate over the negative and experiment with the height of the acetate above the negative for more or less diffusion. Then make another exposure. It should be noted that the acetate will reduce the light output by one or two stops, so bracketing is recommended. The star is accomplished by placing a dot on the artwork using a separate acetate overlay precisely where you want the star to appear. Record this dot on a separate line negative and place it in the carrier. For a white star, simply rotate the white light lever, set the lens to f4.5 and the shutter to one second. Hold a cross screen photographic filter steadily against the lens and make an exposure. Another form of glow is called a backlit neon or eclipse and requires producing a pin registered reversal of the negative, most commonly called a countermat. Working under a safe light, place a short length of unexposed line film, emulsion side up, on a glassed pin registered carrier. Next, place the negative containing the type over the line film, emulsion side down. Close the carrier and expose the sandwiched film to white light for three to five seconds under a non-frosted 15 watt bulb. A safe light with the filter removed is an ideal light source for contact printing. Process the film in trays. The resulting countermat is a precise reversal of the original negative. To create the backlit neon effect, place the negative on the carrier and select the desired color. Place three sheets of frosted acetate over the negative and the countermat on top. Significantly more exposure will be necessary. Start with two and a half stops and bracket your exposures. Reversing the order of the negative and countermat will direct the glow inward for a somewhat three-dimensional appearance. Experiment with the number of sheets of diffusion material. A light serif typeface will require less diffusion for the same effect. Keep the negatives and acetate exceptionally clean when using these techniques as any dirt present will become quite visible on the finished slide. The use of a countermat will also greatly increase the options available when shooting color on color. For example, it is not possible to double expose yellow type over a blue background. The result becomes white type. But this combination can be easily achieved by first placing a countermat on the slide stage when exposing the blue background, then exposing the yellow type. Virtually any combination of color is possible using this matte countermat technique. Slides with greater dimension can be achieved through the use of drop shadows and gradated backgrounds. To create a drop shadow, simply paste up a second overlay of type slightly out of register with the base art in the direction you wish the shadow to appear. Placing the shadow at the lower right of the type is the most common. Convert the art to line negatives. Next, contact print both negatives, double exposing them onto the same frame of line film. This countermat, or mask, now contains the necessary elements for both the drop shadow and the type countermat. Expose the background color through the mask. 
select a color for the type from the palette and expose the negative containing the type from the base art. The resulting slide is precisely the colors selected from the palette with a black drop shadow. Gradated backgrounds are very simple enhancements to create once the background mask has been generated. Producing a soft edge gradation mask is quite time consuming. However, it can be reused to create hundreds of combinations and is well worth the effort. The film stock used for gradation masks must be continuous tone and clear based. Kodak 5302 fine grain release film can be ordered through major photography supply stores in 100 foot rolls and is well suited for this purpose. You will also need a sheet of neutral density gel available through studio lighting supply houses. Cut the gel so that four sections can be conveniently taped to the 4 by 5 glass over the light source on the Chroma Pro. Tape the first gel approximately one third down from the top of the glass. Place another gel over the first, leaving approximately half an inch that does not overlap. Continue in this manner using a third and fourth gel. Set the f-stop wide open and adjust the camera and lens to cover the 4x5 light source. While looking through the viewfinder, raise the camera and lower the lens board, throwing the image out of focus until the lines of the gels become indistinguishable. Tighten the lock knobs. Load the camera with 5302, set the shutter to one second, and make an exposure. Bracketing will need to be done with the shutter speed as stopping down the lens will increase depth of field and bring the various steps of the gels back into focus. Remember to log your exposures. Process the film according to the data sheet included with the film. Contrast is controlled by the camera focus, developer selected, and agitation used when processing. Several attempts may be necessary to achieve a smooth grade from D-min to D-max. Keep the developer time, temperature, dilution, and agitation as consistent as possible and only address one variable at a time. Patience is essential. Once the gradation mask is complete, simply place it on top of the counter mat and drop shadow when exposing the background. Store the mask carefully for reuse. Fine grain release can also be used to create more authentic soft shadows under type. Set the camera to one-to-one -to -one and duplicate the negative containing the drop shadow through a sheet of diffusion onto 5302. The counter mat was placed on the slide stage first, followed by the soft drop shadow for the background exposure, then exposed again with the type negative. It is also possible to insert photographs in windows, as in this example. Begin by drawing the border on the base art. Next, cut the ruby lith window on a second overlay. Cut the drop shadow on a third ruby lith overlay, allowing it to bleed underneath the window. Finally, cut the accent stripes on an additional overlay. Convert the artwork to line negatives. Contact print the window negative and shoot the drop shadow negative onto fine grain release, positioning the camera at one to one and diffusing the image with frosted acetate. Take care to assure that the camera is precisely at one to one and that the carrier is level and centered on the sizing previewer. Then tape a sheet of frosted acetate to the camera over the sizing previewer. Place the window negative on the slide stage and carefully sketch the perimeter of the window onto the acetate using a fine point felt tip pin. Next, replace the negative with the image to be inserted into the window. Using the acetate sketch as a guide, reduce the size of the original until it is slightly larger than the window when sharply focused and position it within the box using the compound. Without moving the camera or compound, remove the acetate and previewer. Load the camera with 5071 duplicating film, dial in the necessary filtration and duplicate the slide. Bracketing is recommended as the reduction of the image size will reduce the necessary exposure. Process the film. To create the finished slide, return to the one-to-one -one position. Set the f-stop, shutter speed, and filtration for slide duplication. Load the camera with 5071 and place the window negative on the slide stage. Next, place the best duplicate over the negative in the carrier and shoot an exposure. Then expose the negative containing the border at this setting. Next, place the window counter mat on the carrier followed by the soft shadow and the gradation mask. 
exposed for the background, remembering that 5071 film is approximately one stop slower than 5018 and will require twice the usual exposure time for matching the color palette. Finally, place the negative for the accent stripes over the window countermat and expose. In this case, the stripes have not been countermatted. Therefore, a compatible color on color selection is required. Streaks are accomplished by moving the negative while the shutter is open. When creating the artwork for a streak effect, keep in mind that thin, outline forms produce the best motion effects. Create an outline form of the artwork and position it on the base art where the streak is to finish. Carefully cut the interior of the image on a ruby lith overlay and paste up the type on a second overlay. Convert the art to line negatives. Return the camera to one to one and adjust the compound so that the image will be centered and straight. Record the numerical position of the compound for the axis you will be moving. In this case, the east-west or X axis. Place the outline negative in the carrier. Set the independent shutter to one half second and practice the move before exposing. Begin by pulling the compound a convenient distance to the right. Then using one fluid motion, push the negative to the left, attempting to open the shutter precisely when the compound crosses the recorded position, moving the negative outside of the recorded frame on the left side. A great deal of patience and practice will be necessary. After you can consistently coordinate the compound's speed, distance, and timing for the exposure, lock open the camera shutter and record the move on film. For the stationary portion of the image, simply return the compound to the recorded centered position and triple expose the light blue border, the interior of the logo, and white type in the usual manner. A vertical streak is accomplished in the same way, using a north-south or y-axis move. For a spin effect, loosen the set screw securing the carrier in the compound and rotate the negative during exposure. Because a spin effect does not carry the image out of the frame, a shorter exposure time of one quarter or one eighth second is recommended so that the image is in motion before the shutter opens and after it closes, preventing accidental burn exposures. Bracketing is necessary when producing any motion effect because the weight of the outlines and the speed of the compound are the primary factors determining exposure, not the time the shutter is open. A beautiful streak effect is a failure if it doesn't communicate the intended message. Remember to include the burn exposure. Another effect that can be accomplished with the compound is called a step and repeat. For this example, the negative was placed in the compound and positioned in the lower portion of the frame, alongside a reference mark on the Y axis. After exposing the blue, the compound was moved toward the column or north one reference mark for the green exposure and one mark progressively higher for the red, orange, and yellow exposure. Step and repeats with an increase in image size are possible by incrementally lowering the camera and refocusing between each exposure. However, these effects are most efficiently accomplished in the artwork stage, using a number of progressively larger PMTs for the type pasted up on separate overlays and then multiple exposed on the Chroma Pro from separate negatives. This method eliminates the time-consuming process of changing camera and compound positions between each exposure and provides for more predictable results. Another creative effect available is called a posterization and is used for making a live photograph more graphic. Start by selecting a slide of medium to high contrast and use it to make contact prints onto line film at a variety of exposures. Choose three line negatives, one almost totally black, another almost clear, and the third approximately in the middle exposure range. Contact print these negatives again using the optimum three to five second exposure, converting them to line positives. Select three colors that work well with the subject matter and duplicate these line positives on the Chroma Pro as a triple exposure. Use the darkest color selection for the positive with the most clear area, the second color for the mid-range positive and the brightest color for the positive containing the highlights. Remember, color on color rules apply when posterizing, so select the colors accordingly. The final example is called a reflection or mirror image and is accomplished by placing a highly reflective surface near the type baseline on a line negative 
angled steeply towards the lens. A piece of west mount glass is ideal for this purpose. While looking through the camera, experiment with the position of the glass for the desired effect. Then make the exposure. These examples were all produced on the Chroma Pro 45 using the procedures described in this video. By combining practice, patience, and imagination, an infinite number of creative opportunities exist for the rewarding production of advanced graphics and special effects slides.